Biology Class 11 Chapter 1 The Living World How wonderful is the living world the wide range of living types is amazing the extraordinary habitats in which we find living organisms peat cold mountains deciduous forest oceans freshwater lakes desert or hot springs leave us speechless the beauty of a galloping horse of the migrating birds, the valley of flowers, or the attacking shark evokes awe and deep sense of wonder. The ecological conflict and cooperation among the members of a population and among population of a community, or even the molecular traffic inside a cell, make us deeply reflect on what indeed is life. This question has two implicit questions within it. The first is a technical one and seeks answer to what living is as opposed to the non-living. And the second is a philosophical one and seeks answer to what the purpose of life is. As scientists, we shall not attempt answering the second question. We will try to reflect on what is living. What is living? When we try to define living, Conventionally look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organisms, growth, reproduction, ability to sense environment, and mount a suitable response come to our mind immediately as unique features of living organisms. One can add a few more features like metabolism, ability to self-replicate, self-organize, interact and emergence to this list. Let us try to understand each of these. All living organisms grow, increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristic of growth. A multicellular organism grows by cell division. In plants, this growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout their lifespan. In animals, this growth is seen only up to a certain age. However, cell division occurs in certain issues to replace lost cells. Unicellular organisms grow by cell division. One can easily observe this in vitro cultures by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope. In majority of higher animals and plants, growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events. One must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth. Non-living objects also grow if we take increase in body mass as a criteria for growth. Mountains, boulders and sand mounds do grow. However, this kind of growth exhibited by non-living objects is by accumulation of material on the surface. In living organisms, Growth is from inside. Growth, therefore, cannot be taken as a defining property of living organisms. Conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms have to be explained and then we understand that it is the characteristic of living systems. A dead organism does not grow. Reproduction, likewise, is a characteristic of living organisms. In multicellular organisms, reproduction refers to the production of progeny processing features more or less similar to those of parents. Invariably and implicitly, we refer to sexual reproduction. Organisms reproduce by asexual means also. Fungi multiply and spread easily due to the millions of asexual spores they produce. In lower organisms like yeast and hydra, we observe budding. In planaria, that is flat worms, we observe true generation. For instance, a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part of its body and becomes a new organism. The fungi, the filamentous algae, the protonema of mosses, all easily multiply by fragmentation. When it comes to unicellular organisms like bacteria, unicellular alga or amoeba 
Reproduction is synonymous with growth. For instance, increase in number of cells. We have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass. Hence, we notice that in single-celled organisms, we are not very clear about the usage of these two terms, growth and reproduction. Further, there are many organisms which do not reproduce, like moles, sterile worker bees, infertile human couples, etc. Hence, reproduction also cannot be all inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms. Of course, no non-living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself. Another characteristic of life is metabolism. All living organisms are made of chemicals. These chemicals, small and big, belonging to various classes, sizes, functions, etc. are constantly being made and change into some other biomolecules. These conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions. These are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms. Be they unicellular or multicellular. All plants, animals, fungi and microbes exhibit metabolism. The sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in our body is metabolism. No non-living object exhibits metabolism. Metabolism reaction can be demonstrated outside the body in cell-free systems. An isolated metabolic reaction outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living nor non-living. Hence, while metabolism is a defining feature of all living organisms without exception, Isolated metabolic reactions in vitro are not living things, but surely living reactions. Hence, cellular organization of the body is the defining feature of life forms. Perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organisms is this ability to sense their surroundings or environment and respond to this environmental stimuli which could be physical, chemical or biological. We sense our environment through our sense organs. Plants respond to external factors like light, water, temperature, other organisms, pollutants, etc. All organisms from the prokaryotes to eukaryotes can sense and respond to environmental cues. Photoperiod affects reproduction in seasonal breeders. Both plants and animals, all organisms handle chemicals entering their bodies. All organisms, therefore, are aware of their surroundings. Human being is the only organism who is aware of himself. For instance, his self-consciousness. Consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organisms. When it comes to human beings, it is all the more difficult to define the living state. We observe patients lying in coma in hospitals virtually supported by machines which replace heart and lung. The patient is otherwise brain dead. The patient has no self-consciousness. Are such patients who never come back to normal life living or non-living? In higher classes, you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions. Properties of tissues are not present in the constituent cells but arise as a result of interaction amongst the con constituent cells. Similarly, Properties of cellular organelles are not present in the molecular constituents of the organelle but arise as a result of interactions amongst the molecular components comprising the organelle. 
these interactions result in emergent properties at a higher level of organization this phenomenon is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all levels therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli biology is the story of life on earth biology is the story of evolution of living organisms on earth all living organisms present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing of common genetic material but to varying degrees diversity in the living world if you look around you will see a large variety of living organisms be it potted plants insects birds your pets or other animals and plants there are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you if you were to increase the area that you make observations in the range and variety of organisms that you see would increase obviously if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it each different kind of plant animal and organism that you see represents a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million this refers to biodiversity or the number and types of organisms present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know the plants and animals in our own area by the local names this local names would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is the only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism is the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism this is acceptable to biologist all over the world for plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature icbn you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomists have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature iczn the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at a same name they also ensure that each that such a name has not been used for any other known organism biologists to follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet this system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature 
this naming system is given by Carlos Linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world. This naming system using a two word format was found convenient. Let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better. The scientific name of mango is written as Mangifera indica. Let us see how it is a binomial name. In this name, Mangifera represents the genus, while indica is a particular species or a specific epithet. Other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows. Biological names are generally in Latin and written in italics. They are Latinized or derived from Latin irrespective of their origin. Second, the first word in a biological name represents the genus, while the second component denotes the specific epithet. Both the words in a biological name, when handwritten, are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. Fourth, the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter, while the specific epithet starts with a small letter. It can be illustrated with the comp example of Mangifera indica. Name of the author appears after the specific epithet. For instance, at the end of the biological name, and is written in an alpha in an abbreviated form, for example, Mendifera indica linux. It indicates that this species was first described by Linnaeus. Since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms, it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible. This process is classification. Classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. For example, we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs, cats or insects. The moment we use any of these terms, we associate certain characters with the organisms in that group. What image do you see when you think of a dog? Obviously, each one of us will see dogs and not cats. Now, if we were to think of Alsatians, we know what we are talking about. Similarly, suppose we were to say mammals, you would of course think of animals with external ears and body hair. Likewise, in plants, if we try to talk of wheat, the picture in each of our minds will be of wheat plant not of rice or any other plant. Hence, all these dogs, cats, mammals, wheat, rice, plant, animals, etc. are convenient categories we use to study organisms. The scientific term for these categories is taxa. Here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different levels. Plants also form a taxa. Wheat is also a taxa. Similarly, animals, mammals, dogs are all taxa. But you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals. Therefore, animals, mammals, dogs represent taxa at different levels. Hence, based on characteristics, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa. This process of classification is taxonomy, external and internal structure, along with the structure of cell, development, process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies. Hence, characterization, identification, classification and nomenclature are all the processes that are basic to taxonomy. Taxonomy is not something new. 
Human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms, particularly with reference to their own use. In early days, human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. Hence, the earliest classifications were based on the uses of various animals. Human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities but also the relationship among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms linnaeus used systema nature as the title of his publication the scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification nomenclature and classification systematics can takes into account evolutionary relationships between organisms taxonomic categories classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy each category referred to as a unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon plural taxa taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example insects represent a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of jointed legs it means insects are recognizable concrete objects which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category can you name other such groups of organisms remember groups represent category category further denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represents a unit of classification this taxonomic groups categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomic studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division for plants class order family genus and species all organisms including those in the plants and animal kingdoms have species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories the basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organisms this helps in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organisms as well as of other kinds of organisms species taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organism with fundamental similarities as a species one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences let us consider mangifera indica solenum tuberosum that is potato and panthera leo that is lion all the three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithet while the first words mangifera solenum and panthera are genera and represents another highest higher level of taxon or category each genus may have one or more than one specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities for example panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solenum includes species like nigrum and melogna human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in the genus homo the spe- 
साइंटिफिक नेम दस फॉर ह्यूमन बींग इज रिटन एज होमो सेपियंस चीनस चीनस कंप्राइज इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ रिलेटेड स्पीसीज विच हैज मोर कैरेक्टर्स इन कॉमन इन कंपेरिजन टू स्पीसीज ऑफ अदर जेनेरा वी कैन से दैट जेनेरा आर एग्रीगेट्स ऑफ क्लोजली रिलेटेड स्पीसीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल पोटेटो एंड ब्रिंजल are two different species but both belong to the same genus solenum lion panthera leo leopard panthera pardus and tiger panthera tigris with several common features are all species of the genus panthera this genus differs from other genus felis which includes cats family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species among plants for example three different genera solanum petunia and datura are placed in a family solanaceae among animals for example genera panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put along with genus felis cats in the family felidae similarly if you observe the features of a cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some differences as well they are separated into two different families felidae and canidae respectively next is order you have seen earlier that categories like species genus and families are based on a number of similar characters generally order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters the similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera included in a family plant families like convolvulaceae solanaceae are included in the order polymonials mainly based on the floral characters the animal order carnivora includes families like felidae and canidae next is class this category includes related orders for example order primata comprising monkey gorilla and gibbon is placed in class mammalia along with order carnivora that includes animals like tiger cat and dog class mammalia has other orders also next is phylum classes comprising animals like fish amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum all this based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal holo neural system are included in phylum chordata in case of plants classes with a few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division next is kingdom all animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to the higher category called kingdom animalia in the classification system of animals the kingdom plantae on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions henceforth we will refer to this two groups as animals and plant kingdoms the taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with species in figure 1.1 these are broad categories however taxonomists have also developed sub categories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa Look at the hierarchy in figure 
can you recall the basis of arrangement say for example as we go higher from species to kingdom the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing lower the taxa more are the characteristic that the members within the taxon share higher the categories greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level hence the problem of classification becomes more complex below table indicates the taxonomic categories to which some common organisms like housefly man mango and wheat belongs to taxonomical aids taxonomic studies of various species of plants animals and other organisms are useful in agriculture forestry industry and in general in knowing our bioresources and their diversity these studies would require correct classification and identification of organisms identification of organisms requires intensive laboratory and field studies the collection of actual specimens of plants and animal species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic studies these are also fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematics it is used for classification of an organism and the information gathered is also stored along with the specimens in some cases the specimen is preserved for further studies biologists have established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimens some of these are explained to you to help you understand the usage of this aids herbarium herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried pressed and preserved on sheets further the sheets are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification the specimens along with their description on herbarium sheets become a storehouse or repository for further use the herbarium sheets also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection english local and botanical names family collectors name etc herbaria also serve as quick referral systems in taxonomic studies botanical gardens the specialized gardens have collections of living plants for reference plant species in this gardens are grown for identification purpose and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical or scientific name and its family name the famous botanical gardens are at q england indian botanical garden havra and at national botanical research institute lucknow museum biological museum are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools and colleges museums have collections of preserved plants and animal specimens for study and reference specimens are preserved in the containers or jars in preservative solutions plants and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimen insects are preserved in insect boxes after collecting killing and pinning larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved museums often have collection of skeletons of animals too zoological parks these are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habits and behavior all animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habits children love visiting this parks commonly known as zoo key key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on the similarities and dissimilarities 
The keys are based on the contrasting characters generally in a pair called couplet. It represents the choice made between two opposite options. This results in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other. Each statement in the key is called a lead. Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family, genus and species for identification purposes keys are generally analytical in nature. Flora, manuals, monographs and catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions. They also help in correct identification. Flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area. This provides the index to the plant species found in a particular area. Manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names or species found in an area. Monographs contain information on any one tech zone. Summary The living world is rich in variety. Millions of plants and animals have been identified and described, but a large number of still remains unknown. The very range of organisms in terms of size, color, habitat, physiological and morphological features make us seek the defining characteristics of living organisms in order to facilitate the study of kinds of diversity of organisms, biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification, nomenclature and biological biologist classification of organisms. The branch of knowledge dealing with these aspects is referred to as taxonomy. The taxonomic studies of various species of plants and animals are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry and in general for knowing our bioresources and their diversity. The basics of taxonomy like identification, naming and classification of organisms are universally evolved under international codes based on the resemblance and distinct differences each organism is identified and assigned a correct scientific or biological name comprising two words. As per the binomial no system of nomenclature, an organism represents or occupies a place or position in the system of classification. There are many categories or ranks and are generally referred to as taxonomic categories or taxa. All the categories constitute a taxonomical hierarchy. Taxonomists have developed a variety of taxonomic aids to facilitate identification, naming and classification of organisms. These studies are carried out from the actual specimens which are collected from the field and preserved as referral in the form of herbaria, museums and in botanical gardens and zoological parks. It requires special techniques for collection and preservation of specimens in herbaria and museums. Live specimens, on the other hand, of plants and animals are found in botanical gardens or in zoological parks. Taxonomists also prepare and disseminate information through manuals and monographs for further taxonomic studies. Taxonomic keys are tools that help in identification based on characteristics. Thank you for watching. Follow for more. See you in the next video.